11. After the image. As we have seen, it is an error to see man in independence from the two atoms and with any original powers. The first atom was created in the image of God. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28. Thus, all men born of Adam are inheritors of his nature. That is, they are image bearers, reflecting God's image. The Westminster Shorter Catechism number 10 asks, How did God create man? And answers, God created man, male and female, after his own image, in knowledge, righteousness and holiness, with dominion over the creatures. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, Colossians chapter 3 verse 10, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24, Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. However, although we must declare that all men are created in God's image, we must recognize that we are not all special creations as was Adam and also Eve. Our image is transmitted through and derived from Adam, and we bear the image as affected by Adam and his fall. Thus, the sons of Adam were, and are, born after his image. Genesis chapter 5 verse 3 This is a key fact. We have a heredity, and it is shaped by Adam's fall. The image of God within us is in Adam given over to the desire to be God, to determine good and evil for ourselves. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5 Our motivation in Adam is predetermined, and our development of the implications of God's image are thus humanistic and sinful. They are man-centered. In Jesus Christ, the second and last Adam, we are born again. John chapter 3 verses 3 to 8. We die to the old Adam, and we are made alive in the new Adam. The larger catechism, number 31, asks, With whom was the covenant of grace made? And answers, The covenant of grace was made with Christ as the second Adam, and in him with all the elect as his seed. We are members of the renewed covenant, not on our initiative, but on Christ's initiative. John chapter 15 verse 16. The covenant rite of communion affirms our membership in the new humanity by our participation and life in the last Adam. We are members of his humanity, not of his deity. Salvation is not deification, but regeneration as a new man. We are not regenerated and made a new creation to be new Adams, but as members of Jesus Christ, the last Adam. We are recreated after the image of his perfect humanity. Some of the texts which speak of this are For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 49 But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10 Thus, our growth and sanctification in that renewed image, is our growth in Christ. The measure of that growth is obedience. Faith obeys, as Abraham obeyed. Genesis chapter 22. Christ, our greater Adam, obeyed, and he requires us to obey him. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, and, being made perfect, 
he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. John chapter 15, verse 14. The fall of Adam and Eve began when doubt and disbelief replaced faith. When they allowed the tempter's question, yea, hath God said, to become their question, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 and 6, they then disobeyed God. Faith, on the other hand, moves in and with Christ to obedience. Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, compare chapter 10, verse 9. Thus, the life of a Christian is not a life of pious gush, it is a life of faith, and therefore obedience. All men reveal their membership by their lives, their works, and their communion. If we are members of Adam the First's humanity, we manifest it, sooner or later, whatever our pretenses and evasions. If we are members of Adam the Second's humanity, we shall manifest its life and fruits. The old humanity culminates, Revelation chapter 19 verses 17 to 21 shows us, in a feast of vultures. However much humanism dreams of a one world order of peace, it leads instead to the world of vultures, to the disaster of total collapse and dismemberment. Revelation chapter 18 verses 1 to 24. The new humanity, on the other hand, triumphs in the communion of a wedding feast, the great festival of the ancient world. Revelation chapter 19 verses 1 to 9. It is the humanity of faith and obedience whose fruits manifest that they are members of Christ, the true vine. John chapter 15 verses 1 to 6. The larger catechism, number 91, reads, Question 91. What is the duty which God requireth of man? Answer. The duty which God requireth of man is obedience to his revealed will. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29, Micah chapter 6 verse 8, 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 22. This is plain enough and thoroughly scriptural. Man, however, seeks all kinds of means to free himself from God's reins and reign. He seeks an independent holiness and assumes that God will be honoured and content with pious gush. The Lord made clear through Micah his contempt for and judgment upon all lawless piety. Micah chapter 6 verses 6 to 15. God has not changed since then. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, and pious gush is never cited in Scripture as a substitute for the obedience of faith. One Old Testament professor, however, insists on eliminating obedience to biblical law on the grounds that it is kingdom typology. The resurrection can also be called kingdom typology and also the virgin birth. John chapter 1 verses 12 and 13. But this does not abolish the resurrection, nor the virgin birth. The claim that the New Testament offers a, quote, higher, end quote, law, the law of the Spirit, means, in effect, that man separates the Holy Spirit from the Word and then identifies the Spirit with man's spirit, man's pious gush, man's self-appointed holiness, and with man's way generally. The fact of Scripture is that man has no independent way. He is either of Adam the first or Adam the second. The image of God within man is a mediated image, coming either from Adam the first or Adam the second. The law of Adam the first's humanity is sin and death. The law of Adam the second's humanity is righteousness or justice, the whole law word of God and life. 
life in faithfulness to Jesus Christ and his whole word. Our Lord declares of his law, And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Luke chapter 16 verse 17 Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfil. For, verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 to 19 Those who assume that the Lord is like unto them, and does not mean what he says, are in for judgment.